Hey everyone, welcome to Beach Investing. I'm your host, Andre Jolkowski. This is Beach Investing five years later. So it's five years ago that I started this video blog. And today, it's seen a real estate market that it's never seen before, which is the GTA as a whole, the average price of all residential dwellings there is 622,000. And that's an increase of 10% over 2014. Then we get into the areas that we like to talk about, which is E3, which is East York, and the average price is 690,000, which is an increase of 9% over 2014. Then E2 being the beaches and East End Danforth, the average price is 850,000, an increase of 13% over 2014. Then E1, which represents Lesleyville and Riverdale, and that's an average price of 730,000, an increase of 10% over 2014. So we're obviously seeing some serious numbers and a lot of appreciation and growth. Uh, a lot of people are thinking maybe this is uh, too much growth, too quickly. Well, let's see what's really going on. Well, supply and demand is really what it's all about. How does the supply meet the demand? Well, right now and over many years now, demand has really been a lot higher than supply. Even today, in March, 2016 we have a lot more supply sorry a lot more demand than there is supply so is there really too much of an increase of prices here is the affordability way out of whack is there a bubble ready to be burst are the oil prices going to cause a huge chaotic panic in the real estate market what is really going to happen well no one really has a crystal ball but I'll tell you my personal opinion so before we get to my personal opinion on what the, what's going on in the, in the market, I want to talk about what's actually worked in 2015 and what continues to work today. A duplex is one of my favorite investment properties. And why is that? Well, if just a few short years ago, you could have bought a duplex for the low 600,000 in these areas. Now they're selling for 775,000 and maybe some even 900,000. So how is that? You know, going to work for investors. It's not really going to cash flow the same, considering the rents have not gone up as much as property values. That's true, but now we have to make some little bit creative adjustments, and that's you got to look for the two and a half story duplex where you can have get the rents to be over four thousand dollars a month, and that's when you start to see the cash flow again. You can't just get your typical two story house anymore unless there are some. Uh, exceptions there but the two and a half story is the most popular and the better cash flowing ones because you get to have a, a three thousand dollar of rent for the main part and then your typical two twelve hundred dollar a month for the basement or two large units since it's two and a half story you can get about twenty two to twenty four hundred dollars per rent for each unit which grosses you forty four to forty eight hundred dollars a month which does cash flow cash flow is anywhere from six hundred to a thousand dollars a month so what's hot? Well, Woodbine and Danforth, the northeast side of that quadrant, is getting really hot. It used to be a section where people used to be like, ah, I kind of want to stay away from there. But now you see things that were selling for mid fives, they're selling now for 900,000 to 1.2 million dollars. And that's just like, wow. Like I didn't expect it to happen this soon, but it's happening. And you know, people are uh, taking advantage. What's not so hot? Well, bidding wars, they're the common theme right now. But when you are the seller and you're looking at maybe 10 offers on the table and your highest offer comes in and they don't have a deposit check with them, that's not hot. There's issues with that and that can happen the day after when they come and bring in that deposit check. They can start renegotiating. I've seen that happen. It's not the right thing. It's not ethical. It's not legal. But it happens. So just be aware when you're in that bidding war, just be careful of what you're accepting and make sure you do your due diligence with your agent. So what is going on in the Toronto market? So this is where my opinion comes in. Interest rates are at historical lows. Oil prices are crazy. There is a bubble to be ready to be burst. So what is really going to happen now? Well, I believe Toronto is the New York City. Toronto, just like any other expensive city out there, whether it's Beijing, New York, Toronto is the next one. In Toronto, people are saying that the affordability is getting out of control, that property values are going 
too high and they're not, you know, they're not in relation with people's incomes anymore. So how, it's, it's only a matter of time that property values will come down. But what about New York? Do they have a, a proportion of income, uh, what people earn and their property values? No, they don't. So is that wrong? No, it just means that more people will rent and the rich will be buying and then renting out their units. That's what I truly believe will happen to Toronto. Toronto has the infrastructure, they have the, the transportation, the economic fundamentals to support this. They, in these areas, we are so close to the heart of Canada. That's what I believe. And we have, not only we have a concrete jungle downtown in Toronto, we have green space, we have transportation, we have a beach, we have highways, we have employment, we have everything we need to sustain all this. So I believe that Toronto is going to become the next New York. And we will see continuing house price Health prices to increase. So what is the trend that I'm seeing right now? It's a very interesting trend that when you people retire, they start to move out in the suburbs. They start moving out into retirement country, cottage country, just so they can be by the lake, tranquil, tranquility, and serene waters and forests and stuff like that. But what I'm noticing now is a trend that people who are retiring are actually moving back into the city. And why is that? Because they're close to what they need, all the amenities top hospitals is the number one reason. That's what Toronto has. So are the retirees coming back and buying houses? Maybe, but some of them are also renting because they cannot afford it. So it just means that there's more renters. That's the future of Toronto, ladies and gentlemen. That's what I believe. Everyone's got their own opinion, but I hope that you see value in what I'm presenting here. Please feel free to call me and welcome to the future.